Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with a brand new iPad to take a look at, but it's not entirely brand new. It's got a new design, it's got a new name, a familiar name, iPad. Gone is iPad Air 2, which this is replacing, and the big news here is that it's cheaper. Starts off at $329, where the previous model started off at $399. That definitely comes with some compromises to get down to that price level, but we also get some upgraded specs. Now, once again, I've got myself into trouble here because I have to unbox every color, so we have three colors to take a look at here, silver, gold and space gray. One of them is LTE, so we get LTE cellular data. The others are just Wi-Fi. So cracking into these boxes, the first thing we'll see here is a pretty familiar sight. So the front of these iPads look identical to the iPad Air and the iPad Air 2. So the changes in the design really come down to dimensions and some of the details, and of course we'll take a close look at it. In terms of the accessories, we do get some paperwork. Now if you have a cellular model, you will get a SIM ejection tool, so you can pop out the Apple SIM and replace it if you need to. Now the Apple SIM is something we've seen for a few years. This allows you to sign up with a variety of carriers without buying a specific SIM for that carrier. So unfortunately, this iPad does not get the embedded SIM of the latest iPad Pros. But moving on, we have some basic paperwork and a set of Apple stickers. When it comes down to accessories, we get a 12 watt power supply along with a lightning cable. Now this iPad has a fairly big battery, 32.4 watt hours, which is good for about 10 hours of general use. Now that is quite a bit bigger than the batteries in the iPad Air 2 and the iPad Pro, which are around 27 watt hours, but again, they deliver about the same battery life. Now really the best way to summarize this iPad is that they've combined the original iPad Air with the iPad Air 2. So we have the same dimensions and overall chassis design of the iPad Air 1, but it picks up the design and most of the features of the iPad Air 2 and has been upgraded with the latest A9 CPUs. So on one side, it's an upgraded iPad Air 2. On the other side, it's a step back to the iPad Air 1. Now if you draw a line of succession from the original iPad to this iPad, this should be the seventh generation iPad, but Apple is actually calling this the fifth generation iPad. That's because they're not including the iPad Airs. So the iPad Airs, although gone in name, might return later with a new generation. So we'll see what happens later this year. So taking a close look at the hardware design, for the most part, this has all the same features of the iPad Air 2. So that includes an eight megapixel eyesight camera, good for 1080p HD video. We also have an F2.4 aperture, so no changes to the camera back here. It's still a pretty decent camera overall. Toward the bottom edge, we have a set of stereo speakers flanking a lightning connector. So no quad speakers like the iPad Pro. But of course, like all iPads, we still get a headphone jack. We also get a set of dual microphones mounted toward the top center. Now in my case, of course, I have two Wi-Fi models and a cellular model. So the cellular model has a plastic window which is used for radio transparency for the LTE radios and GPS antennas. And also like other modern iPads, we also have an inset Apple logo which is polished and color matched to the body. Also returning from the iPad Air 2 is Touch ID. So this is the cheapest device with Touch ID built in. Now this is the first generation Touch ID sensor, so it's not quite as fast as the latest Touch ID 2 sensor. Also not upgraded from the iPad Air 2 is the 1.2 megapixel FaceTime HD camera, good for 720p video with an f2.2 aperture. It's a decent camera, but it is getting quite old now. So getting to the display, this is where things get a little controversial, and that's because this display really is a downgrade from the iPad Air 2. Now this still is a 9.7 inch display with a resolution of 2048 by 1536, good for 264 PPI. It's still LCD IPS, so it looks great off axis, but unfortunately, it's not laminated to the glass anymore. So there's an air gap between the glass and the display, just like the first generation iPad Air. So unfortunately, that means there's more light refraction and distortion, so it's not quite as deep and vibrant as the iPad Air 2. The other disappointing factor here is that there is much more glare on this compared to the iPad Air 2, which had a much better anti-reflective coating. And the other side effect of having an air gap between the display and the glass is that it's noisier. So when you tap on the display, it is more audible than that of the iPad Air 2 or the iPad Pro. Now Apple does say that this display is brighter than the iPad Air 2, but doesn't specify how much brighter, like they typically do. So it's really not clear in what way this is brighter, but at first glance, it's really hard to tell the difference. I think the biggest difference when you look at these displays side by side really is the color. The iPad fifth generation is quite a bit warmer than the iPad Air 2. So for me, the colors actually look a bit richer on the newest iPad compared to the cooler colors of the iPad Air 2. 
Now there are a few visual differences between the new iPad and the iPad Air 2. Obviously the new iPad is thicker, noticeably thicker than the iPad Air 2, but the same thickness as the original iPad Air 1. It's also slightly heavier at just over one pound. But there are some other visual cues. So for example, the polished chamfers are gone with the new iPad. Instead we get these matte chamfers. It's very similar to what they did with the iPhone SE. So either this is a cost cutting decision or it's part of the new design aesthetic. In addition to removing the chamfers on the buttons and the polished recession between the volume controls, the volume controls are more widely spaced on the new iPad. The microphones are also in a different location. You'll find them at the top center versus around the camera module. Toward the bottom edge, the speakers have also been tweaked with larger perforations and they're not quite as wide. There are a few visual cues that tell us that this is based on the original iPad Air, which includes the location of the microphones, which are in the same spot as the original iPad Air. Same with the location of the SIM trays. They're farther down on the iPad Air 1 and the newest iPad compared to the iPad Air 2 and the new Pros. When it comes down to it, really the only part that's upgraded here is the processor. So we go from the A8X in the iPad Air 2 to the A9. We definitely see some performance gains here if we look at our Geekbench scores and they're pretty significant. So that makes this iPad much more future-proof compared to the iPad Air 2. Now, although it's a year old, the iPad Pro is still much more powerful with the A9X processor. So we definitely see better Geekbench performance there. When it comes down to features and software, there really is no difference between the iPad Air 2 and this one. There's nothing new, nothing removed, uh, but it doesn't have some of the things that the iPad Pro has, such as the smart connector for a keyboard accessory or support for Apple Pencil. But everything else is the same including multi-windowing for multitasking and the overall iOS 10 experience is identical, just smoother thanks to the faster A9 processor. Now, although we're getting the new A9 chip and the M9 Motion coprocessor, this does not feature wireless Siri. So unfortunately, you still need to be connected to power in order to use the Hey Siri command. So ultimately, this is not the most exciting new iPad to come out, but it's definitely the most affordable at 329. It's more affordable than the iPad mini 4. It also makes it a great entry point for a lot of people who have not yet purchased an iPad. Instead of focusing on design and details that may not really matter, they focused on performance to make sure that this tablet works for years to come. So although this is not my personal iPad of choice, and if you have an iPad or two, you probably shouldn't bother upgrading. But for new tablet customers or people upgrading from older iPads, this is definitely the best value we've seen to date. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the new iPad. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up to let me know and I'll see you again in my next video.